Alright everybody, I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. Very exciting times in the city. Uh, our newly elected mayor, Dr. Karen Weaver, is going to be laying out her 100 day plan today. And not only will she be laying out what that plan entails, but she will be laying out what has already been accomplished thus far in that plan and what's yet to do. So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our new mayor, yes. Dr. Karen Weaver. Okay, thank you, and good morning, everybody. I'm so happy to see you all here today. Uh, I'm excited about that, especially about the community participation. So thank you all for being here. Um, as we... Uh, as Jason talked about, I'm here, I just wanted to do my 100-day agenda. That was something that I had talked about, actually, uh, at the swearing-in, is that I would be giving a 100-day agenda. So I want to go through that with you all and uh, kind of give you an update on where we are with some of the things. Uh, because during the course of the campaign, I know I made some pledges to the citizens of the community. So I want to go through those. The one, and one of the first pledges I made was that I was going to work tire, tirelessly. I was going to work tirelessly to try to resolve the city's water problems. That was number one on our, on our agenda. I also said that I was going to work diligently to restore democracy. Yes. yes. And yes. talk about democracy and home rule back to, back to city government in addition to giving the voice, truth, and being transparent. And so that's why, that's part of why I'm here today, because I do, I want to keep you all informed as much as possible about what's going on. Now there were some other items that were on my platform, including economic development, a return to community policing, and a vigorous neighborhood revitalization program that I vow to expend considerable energy over the course of my tenure in office. So those things will be happening. But today, I'm going to talk about uh, the programs, projects, and the tasks that I plan to undertake in the next 100 days. Now, uh, it doesn't mean that they'll be all completed in the next 100 days, but these are things that we have started on, and some of them will be ongoing. So it doesn't mean that they have an end date as well. But one of the first things that I talked about was petitioning the federal government to declare Flint a, a federal disaster area. So I do want to let you know where, you know, what I've done in that area because that's not something we can do ourselves. We have to have the governor do that. But I have had some meetings because, as I've said before, and we all know this is the, um, the, the largest uh, public health infrastructure crisis that Flint has ever experienced. So I have had a, a telephone conversation with Senator Stabenow. I met with Senator Peters yesterday because we've got to get them involved to help us push this. The other thing is I have talked with Kildy. We have a meeting set up. I have met with uh, Jim Ananick, and I have also met with State Representative Sheldon Neely, and I will be meeting with uh, State Representative Bill Phelps because we've got to push this together to make this happen. And like I said, it's not up to us. We've got to push the governor. That's right. So that's what we're at least working together to, to try to make that happen. So I wanted to let you know about that. We talked about restoration of home rule. And I have been meeting with the governor's people, with his staff, um, a lot. Let me just say a lot. We've had about four or five meetings. And uh, those meetings, I'll have to tell you, they've been very positive I left there feeling very optimistic. Is it something that's going to happen today? No, it's not going to happen today, but we have some things that are going to be in place. So I'm really excited about that, and as that rolls out, I will continue to let you know where we are with that. But we're working on that, and, and I'm hoping that it happens sooner rather than later. Because one of the things we know is the residents of the city demand it. They demand the restoration of our rights. about a comprehensive um, review of the city's finances. One of the things that was talked about was a forensic audit, but there's some things we need to do first. We have some first steps. And the first step I did was to sit down with Ms. Henderson to start reviewing the budget. 
uh, sitting down with the CFO to go through the budget, and those will be things that we'll continue to do. But the other thing is, we've had some audits that were done over the last four or five years, so we need to pull those, and I want to start reviewing those audits, and especially paying a close, you know, paying close attention with the water sewer fund. So those are the steps we're going to take initially to see where we are, so I can let you know here's what's taken place. We have a water advisory committee. Now, some people have said, um, what's going on with that? And that's what I really want to know. I want to take a closer look at what's going on with that. And so, uh, people have talked about expanding it. I don't know if expanding it is the correct term. I think we need to restructure that and see who's at the table and yes. make sure we have people that are yes. looking out for that. And, and I'm going to continue to talk about the um, the water, because one of the things I just attended last week was the KWA board, and um, it was very nice. I'm going to tell you to see that there were people from the public that attended that meeting, and it, it was interesting to me because I don't know if, if people weren't aware of when the meeting was, no. but people weren't coming from the public, and we have to have some public input, Thank and you. at that I did do some reappointments. I, I and some new appointments. I reappointed uh, State Representative Sheldon Neely to the KWA board. I appointed uh, Councilman Eric Mays to the KWA board. I also appointed Dr. Laura Sullivan from Ketter, Ketter University to the KWA board. And what I'm hoping is that we have people uh, that are really, you know, I, I told them that I am there for the bigger picture. I'm there to work with them, but we will always keep our focus on the Flint because we're the ones that have been hurt by this water situation. Right. We're the ones who have kids that have been damaged and seniors that have been damaged right. and have to take all of the precautions. So we'll always have a focus on the Flint. And so I'm, I, I know that I have people there with me that will bring this information back to the public. And like I said, don't leave us there. Don't expect us to do all of the work. We need you all there to be part of that, to be a voice, and to take this information out to the people. And I know a lot of you work, so I want to thank you for that. I also talked about a, a, a vigorous community engagement program. And one of the promises that I made was that we would do monthly town hall meetings. The first one is scheduled December 8th. It will be at Hasselbrand. I believe it's at 5 o'clock. And what I will be doing is whatever uh, Whatever ward I'm in, I'm going to about invite that council person to be there and be part of that. I know we have the second one uh, set up at St. Paul, and we have our third one will be on the east side, but those look, the, the dates are yet to be determined. But we will be keeping that information out there. So we will be having our monthly town hall meetings. I will continue to attend the uh, block club meetings and the neighborhood association meetings as much as possible. Uh, that was where I got a lot of information, and uh, that's how I, I have to stay in touch with the community. So I'm getting those in my schedule, and I will be there, you know, as much as I can. I also want to encourage uh, citizens. We, we got that Ruth Mott grant, and they're going to be starting the community policing on the north side of Flint, and we're really excited about that. But I want this, I want you all to be part of that. We've got to be part of, of these. Uh, kinds of activities if we want to see some changes happen in the city of Flint. So we know we have the, the, the mini station that's over there. We know we have the one at the um, small mall. So I just want you all to stay part of that, stay engaged and stay focused and help us with that because that's the only way it's going to work. Uh, so we've got some money to start doing this, so we've got to do our part as well. Uh, one of the things, and I don't, I don't have a date for this yet, but one of the things you can look for to happen will be uh, really, I'm going to say, reestablishing a mobile city hall so that I can take the government to the people. Everybody can't come here all the time, and we need to be out and about in the community. So that's something that we're looking to have happen. And somebody, I, well, actually, I had two people ask me today, when are we going to start the open door policy? That will, uh, it's been very hectic. That will start January beginning of the year, January 6th is when that will begin. So, call and get those appointments set up. I, I have talked about uh, collaborating with universities and colleges. I think that's really, really important that we do that. And
and some meetings I have spoken with uh, the president of U of M, Sue Borrego, and we talked about some visions that we had that are similar, some things we'd like to see happen. And so we will be sitting down to talk about how we can do that. I have a meeting next week with the president of Mott Community College. Uh, the, the president from Kettering has reached out, so we need to get that set up. And I'm not going to forget about Baker. But those are some resources that we need to utilize better because it could be a win-win for not only the city of Flint, but for those students. And we're always talking about what do we need to do to keep them here. We need to engage them and make them part of the process. Yes. And there are a lot of uh, things that can be done when we work together, whether it's doing surveys, creating a database for different kinds of things, uh, making some of their research projects, projects that help the city of Flint to help us move forward. So those are the kinds of things that we're going to be looking at. And I, I, I'm really, really looking forward to that because we've got to keep that young brain power here in the city of Flint to help us make things better. Let's see. I'm going back to water again because we have a water bill relief fund and it's called Keep the Water Flowing and we've used the CDBG uh, funds for that and as well as United Way has helped with that. And what we want to do is increase the amount of money that's there. While, I mean, we can fuss and complain about uh, how the water bills were raised and what's wrong with the water, but we still have to provide some resources to the people while we try to fix these things. So we've got to attack it on both ends. So we want, I want, I want to work with some of the other uh, social service agencies and see if we can get some more money in that fund because that's what we have to do and let people know about it. We've got to do a better job of communicating this information because I don't know if people knew the resource was there. I don't know, you know, to utilize or to contribute to because we've got to try to help take care of each other. And so one of the things we can do is to, um, you know, to stay better connected and to communicate better is I do want people to go to the uh, to our, our website. Uh, if you go to our home page because you can sign up for those email notifications and get information about that. So please, please, please do that. And um, we'll be keeping information out there for you. I know there's a, if you go into the office, there's a screen that gives you information. We'll have information at this table. We're going to be doing that Ask the Mayor. But we've got to communicate this information better. So when you get it, share it on your Facebook page as well. Because we've got to use social media to help us get this information out there. So that's one of the things that we need to do. And also, uh, we've got to do a better job of collaborating with the agencies that are doing this lead poisoning mitigation kinds of services. We, I know, and I don't want to say the wrong agency, but I know somebody was doing something as far as nutrition. And what is a good nutrition if you've been exposed to lead? So we've got to partner with some of those agencies and, and make more of those kinds of things happen because we know we're going to need more, more screens. We know we're going to need increased nutrition services. We're going to need more mental health providers. We're going to need, get, we need more people to participate in the WIC program and the Head Start and Early Head Start so they can get these kinds of services. So I'm looking to, to work with uh, not only the medical centers, uh, the, the hospitals, but we, we have Mott Children's, we have Hamilton Health, we have the Health Coalition, and here's another way that the schools can be helpful to us when we have those social work programs and those early childhood development programs. So we've got to work together and get those services going. So we really need to be uh, more about collaborating with the agencies that can help us do this. So that's one of the other things. And, and along with that is having these courtesy meetings. So I am meeting with the business community, the labor community, uh, different philanthropic organizations, because we have all of these resources, but we've really been operating in silos, and a lot of times we don't know what the other person has to offer and bring to the table. So we've got to bring all of those communities together so we can uh, get some things going. We, we cannot continue to stay in, our, in this building, and they stay in their buildings, and think we're going to make some things happen at the, at the rate that we want them to happen, because they need to happen quickly on, on, on some of these kinds of things. So I'm, I will be calling those meetings together, and I'm looking forward to that happening. And when we have the first one, I will let people know about that. Uh, and, the, and the last thing that I want to talk about in this 100-day agenda, and it's certainly not the least, is the youth initiatives, because we keep talking about young people. Uh, but we need to do more than talk about them. We need to be about the work of 
bringing them to the table and helping them. One of the things I can envision is something like an, an, an operation hire, helping you reach employment. And so one of the things I'm going to request of local businesses and city vendors is to step up to the plate a little bit more. We want them to provide 500 summer employment opportunities for the youth of our city in the first year. We're trying to give them some Uh, develop some youth engagement opportunities within city government. That's what we have to do. And I really like to focus on 7th through 12th grade and then college age uh, because that's who we're trying to impact and that's who we're trying to keep. And, and when you talk about those younger ones, I'm really going to drop down to 7th through 9th grade because one of the things that we're committed to um, uh, working with is the, the, the suspended expulsion program. And that's a partnership, and that's what we have to have more of, our partnerships, whether they're public, private, all of these different entities. But it's a partnership with the Flint Police Department, the Genesee County Circuit Court Juvenile Division, and the Flint Community Schools. And the goal of this is to provide education, uh, target the causes of crime, and decrease offending behaviors in 7th through ninth grade. Because we know that uh, they're committing crimes. They get kicked out of school and it's a vicious cycle that makes no sense. So we've got to keep them with us You're and right. keep them engaged. They are our future. You're That's absolutely right. 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 And Special education students don't want to serve so, that, so, so we're going to be very committed to that program. And you know, there's another program. Big Brothers Big Sisters has something that's yes. youth workforce opportunities. We've got to work with them and, and see what can we bring to the table? What kind of help do they need or what are the other resources can come and help us get these things going. Because like we, we have all talked about, our youth are our future and we haven't done enough to keep them here and to help them, you know, give them the helping hand that they need. We always, we talk about them a lot and we, we talk about all the negative uh, things they are engaged in. But some of that is our responsibility right. to, to lead them and guide them and give them the support that's necessary. So those are the things that I have for my 100-day agenda. Uh, I will be reaching out to you all to help with this, and I'm looking forward to working with everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing you at these town hall meetings on the days when my door is open. I'm looking for you to come through so we can talk about different issues. And I am looking forward to all of you, uh, you know, working together to help me flip forward. Because I said, I can't do it by myself. I'm not trying to do it by myself. I need all of you and the people that are out there to help. And so I just want to thank you all for coming today. I appreciate your engagement and your involvement. And I look forward to talking with you some more. Thank all right, you. all right.